Good morning, everyone. We are here today with Julianne Miller of Life Money Management. And today we are going to talk about emotional spending. We already talked about budgeting. We already talked about credit. And uh, emotions play a big part in how people spend their money. So we're going to address that a little bit today. Good morning. Thanks, Judy. Uh, good morning. It's good to be back again. Um, I've been enjoying our videos and it's nice to see everyone's responses and our links yep. and uh, below our, our videos. So today, um, as you said, we're tackling emotional spending. So something a little bit deeper, a little bit um, more serious, so to speak. We're going to talk about what that is, what emotional spending is signs that you are doing some emotional spending, when it might happen, how it feels um, as you're doing it or after you've done it, and some ways that you can control it. So I can't go out and buy that new RV because it looks pretty is what you're saying. <laughs> that's correct. Sometimes <laughs> you really have to think things through and that's sure. what we're going to talk about a little bit today. All right, sounds good. So I want to talk about what emotional spending is. It's really when you are buying items that are intended to make it either you or the recipient feel better. But oftentimes they're rather impulsive or unexpected. Um, so you might start off with something in particular in mind, but then your emotions get the best of you. Um, and that spending gets a little out of control, sometimes in a good way and sometimes in a bad way. But um, for the recipient, I should say, right. <laughs> um, but definitely um, very emotional uh, behind that. Some of the ways that you might find that you are an emotional spender is if you make a purchase and you regret it. So as soon as you buy something, you think to yourself, oh, why did I spend that much? Um, or why did I buy that when I didn't really want it? Right. Um, that's one sign that you might be an emotional spender. Another one would be if you shop when you're sad or you're angry. You know, something happens in your life and it really uh, tosses you a curve and you decide, you know what, that's it. I'm just going to go shopping and that'll make it feel better. Um, that's another time when you might be an emotional spender. Or the opposite might happen. Let's say you have a happy um, event in your life and you go out and you want to get a gift. And next thing you know, you've overspent. I think that's you know, the biggest books. one for people. It is. It Trying to make, is. Uh, making yep. other people happy because it makes them feel good that they're doing it, but then they regret doing it and it makes them feel worse in the long run. Yes, and a common one for that is Christmas time. Mm -hmm. People get all excited about Christmas and, you know, have kids or grandkids and they're all excited and see all kinds of fun items. So they spend on this and spend on that. Next thing you know, they've spent too much. And traditions on that one too, because it's, a, it's always been a tradition. We do it this way. We always do it this way. So let's do it, you know, let's keep buying all these gifts, even though our families are expanding. And <laughs> yes, and you're, you're very right about that. That's a very good point. Good. Um, and one of the last ones that um, sometimes might mean that you're an emotional spender is if you hide your purchases after you've purchased them because you feel shame or guilt. Um, you're worried about what other people will think, especially maybe a spouse. Um, if you're hiding things from your spouse, um, it might be because you're making purchases that uh, just don't make sense and aren't right for the family. <laughs> so uh, we've talked about a few instances when it might happen, but let me talk about some more, uh, specifically around emotions. Happy celebrations, we talked about that. Birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, Christmas time. Those are, as you said, real big when, um, big times when people tend to overspend. Another one is socially, if you're planning a party. Uh, you might be excited about that party and you um, want to impress the people that you're with, keeping up with the Joneses, as we say. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're throwing picnics, so you've, you want to get lots of food and you tend to overspend. That's another time. Um, any kind of entertaining like that. 
Another one is if, you know, there's a lot of multi-level marketing um, parties out there. So people <laughs> get excited about that. They want to support their friends. Right. And sometimes, you know, a, a situation like that, you feel a little bit of pressure. Um, you might like what you're buying. So you buy a little extra because the parties are only, you know, once a year or once every quarter. You don't get to see them all the time to budget for it and plan for it. Right. So you might, you might be looking to spend a little extra then. You know, I mentioned keeping up with the Joneses. Sometimes that happens when you're purchasing a house and you're excited about a house, but the neighbor's house next door looks... Uh, in your mind, a little bit better than yours. Right. If you want to spruce up the outside. Um, you tend to spend a little bit more on the landscaping or on the furniture that you're buying. Right. So you, so you tend to... Uh, well, we bought a new house, so now we need new furniture and now we need yeah. new this. I see that a lot in the RV community. People are talking, I just went out and bought a new camper, so now I need to go out and buy everything new to stock that camper. and. You know, like the kitchen stuff, and it's like, well, people, if you look around your kitchen, you probably have three of everything, so you can probably take one of those and put them in your camper, and you don't have to buy new stuff. But that's correct. A lot of people uh, and, don't have that mindset. Well, and we see that with the young generation too. Um, mm -hmm. They're moving, and they've got you know fresh ideas, and they're excited about it, and they want all new things. You know, <laughs> they're not worried about grandma's knickknacks. Right. That could line their shelves, you know, or things like that. They want to pick their own things out. Very good. Huh? Um, and finally, another one are events. Um, I mentioned a few of them. A new house, new apartment, a new marriage. You know, you're excited to be with your spouse. You want to do things. You want to travel. Um, so you might be spending a little bit more than what you are planning on budgeting. The marriage ceremony itself. Yes. So yes. many people get in debt doing that. Well, you know, again, the traditions, we have to do it this way. We have to do it that way. And right. a lot of people seem better now that they're, they're breaking traditions a little bit. And well, there's still that um, friends and family pressure, though. Right. Where you see, you know, uh, mom might say, well, you have to invite your great aunt Ethel, you know, to this <laughs> one, you know, and uh, you haven't seen Aunt Ethel in 25 years, but right. you need to invite her. Right. Um, some, you know, other pressures like that. Sometimes that adds up. Yeah. And um, new babies. There's always a lot of excitement about new babies, a lot of spending around new babies. Um, so you'll see a lot of emotional spending there too. Yeah. Sometimes um, after you've done that, you know, emotional spending, there then tends to be a lot of feelings behind the after effects and how you might be feeling. A lot of times you might feel embarrassed. You're um, sad that you've done it. You're angry that you've done it. You might be frustrated. Maybe it's happened before and then it happened again. So you're frustrated with yourself for doing it. Um, you might feel guilty if you're a, one of a spouse and you know that you've been trying to do real good with your budget and you just couldn't help it when out on that little shopping spree and then you come home and you, you're feeling guilty about it. Uh, and or jealous of others. We talked about keeping up with the Joneses. Um, that jealousy creeps in. And um, so those are some of the emotions that you really have to work through and understand. Um, and we'll talk about a, um, a handout that, a worksheet that we're going to have today um, to go along with this. And I'll mention that a little bit more at the end. And so. we'll put the link below for that so they can. Yes. Look. Yep. We'll talk about that. Yeah. So what are some ways you can control it? Well, there's quite a few. Um, the first is that when you get that feeling that you want to, you know, go out and shop or do something that it, you think might be an issue for you, find some other ways to satisfy that feeling. Um, take a walk, call a friend. Um, there's lots of different ways that you can um, just redirect your thinking and your feeling around that. Um, you can re make sure you're reviewing your budget often uh, and regularly. Whether you're doing it weekly, bi-weekly, um, those are usually at least what we, I would probably recommend. You know, look at your category for gift giving 
and look at your category for the household expenses. Mm -hmm. Make sure you know what that is. Um, before you go out to make those purchases. Right. And, 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 and sorry, and if it's something that you do want to do because it does make you feel good to be able to make these purchases, make sure you're budgeting for those, you know, put a little extra in those categories so you can do what you want to do, you know, make that your priorities. Yes, yeah, and that's one of the things we've talked about um, in these last couple of videos is, you know, your goals, your dreams, your values, and you do, you wanna make sure that those are scheduled into your budget and um, planned in your budget. And then as we've discussed, you know, sticking to that budget, uh, mm -hmm. try not to allow those emotions to, um, to work into that, those numbers. Right. So that leads us to our third one, and that's spending within your means. You know, stick to your budget when you're making your purchases, plan ahead. Uh, so that you know what that budget is before you go and, and you're shopping. Um, some other ways you can also um, find ways in particular to um, put a barrier in between you and what you tend to always do. So for example, if you're always online shopping, well, let's put in a barrier to stop that or curtail it quite a bit. You know, don't auto save your credit card. You know, keep it off of there. So every time you go to make an online purchase, you have to go and physically go get that credit card and then think about that on the way to getting that credit card. Do make I it, really want this? Right. Make it a conscious decision that you're actually going yeah. to buy it. Yeah, exactly. So I, I can't buy new microphones or cameras is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you, can, you know, use your emotion and um, you plan it, plan it out look at your budget, you know, all those things that we've just talked about. Finally, another one is to journal about your feelings, you know, make sure you're keeping on top of how you how you're feeling normally. Are you in a good place with your emotions? Um, are you trying to remain stress free whenever you can? And what steps are you taking to, um, to keep your emotions balanced? When you have more balance in your life emotionally, then sometimes you tend to um, make better choices around um, your, both your budget and with other things, those things also. And finally, the last one, um, what tip to control it is again, reviewing your dreams and goals, making sure that it's top of mind. So that's definitely something Def else that you want definitely to- Definitely build your budgeting around that. I mean, if you have, you know, put, put what you want to do and, and figure it out. And mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, exactly. And if you guys haven't seen the uh, budgeting video, I'll put the link for it up there. So you guys yeah, can check that out. Yeah, a lot of great out. information in that video. Yeah. So today we actually um, have a great worksheet for you to try out, and it's called the Emotional Spending Wheel. So you can take a look at that and get an idea of which emotion brings you the most emotional spending issues. So as you look at the wheel, you'll take a look at that and determine, you know, when I'm this emotion, when I'm happy, am I an emotional spender or am I not an emotional spender? And when you look at that, you can get a real sense for if that might be a problem for you or not. So when you recognize when it's happening, you can go ahead and set aside time to plan your budget, set your regular reminders of your goals and your dreams, practice your emotional self-care, and you can learn to keep your emotional spending under control. I think there's a whole range of emotions that go into to all of this. There are, and, and that's one of the reasons that I like the wheel, because the wheel talks about a lot of those different emotions. And so you can look at those and think about them and really reflect on your spending to figure out where those particular issues might be for you. And when you have that awareness, once you have that awareness, then you can really start to work through it and make a plan to overcome what those issues might be. Sounds great. Yeah, so feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or need any help. Um, you can find me on Facebook and LinkedIn, Julianne Miller at Life Money Management. And thanks again for Judy, uh, to Judy for having me. These have been a lot of fun.
Um, and I, I hope they've been informative for our viewers also. Great. Thank you, Julianne. And I will put all of Julianne's information down in the link. So make sure you go in and check her out. Go join her Facebook page. And uh, she does a newsletter on her website. So if you leave your email address and go get the freebies. We have the freebie for the budgeting and we have a freebie for the credits and now the freebie for the emotional spending. So between those three things, you guys should be getting your money on track. And uh, we may do one more live. I think we might do a fun, a fun money thing. And uh, you guys can come in and join us and ask us questions. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So guys, don't forget, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to check out the links below and leave a comment. If you have any questions, leave those and we can get back to you on those. And we will see you at the live. Take care. Sounds great. Thanks.